Good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us today. I'm glad that we have a quorum uh, as early as it is. It is 10.09, and I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, Madam Secretary, can we have the roll call, please? Mayor Jesse Allett. Present. Mayor Del Alvarez. Vice Mayor Jesse Bautista. Present. Vice Mayor Peter Benaventi. I say it again. I'm here. Mayor June Bloss. Present. Mayor Anthony Chargaloff. Present. Mayor Ernest Chargaloff. Mayor John Cruz. Vice Mayor Kevin Delgado. Present. Vice Mayor Christopher Farron. Present. Mayor Jesse Gogui. Present. Mayor Robert Hoffman. Present. Vice Mayor Rudy Uriarte. Present. Vice Mayor Loretto Leones. Mayor Paul McDonald. Mayor Rudy Paco. Present. Mayor Bill Kenga. Representative. Mayor Johnny Kanata. Present. Mayor Louise Rivera, present. Mayor Frankie Salas. Mayor Frankie Salas, I see you. Mayor Anthony Sanchez. <laughs> okay. Mayor Anthony Sanchez. Present. Mayor Melissa Savares. Guy Gizu. Mayor Kevin Sisuiko. Here. Mayor Vicente Taidegui. Representative. Vice Mayor Albert Tovez. Vice Mayor Albert Thomas, I see. Oh, President. Mayor Alan Nagakta. Yes, thank you. Do. Okay. Mr. President, we have 18 members president. At present, we have a quorum. Mr. President, we do have a quorum, 18 members present. Thank you, sorry, I was just doing a little <laughs> something else on this thing. <laughs> Hopefully this will be our last <laughs> Zoom meeting. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the approval of the agenda, may I please have a motion to approve this agenda? I move to approve. Motion. The motion is made by the mayor of Dedido. Is there a second? Second. 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 Seconded by the vice mayor of Garigada. Is there are there any discussion on this? Is there any discussion on this motion? No, no discussion. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All who opposed. Uh, with no opposition, the motion carries. Thank you. May I please have a motion to approve the meeting of the minutes for December? Motion to approve. The motion is made by the Mayor Baragada. Is there a second? Second. Second by the Mayor of Mingilao. Is there any discussion on this motion? Notice, see no discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, all opposed? Seeing there's no opposition, the motion carries. May I please have a motion to approve the uh, treasurer's report? 
Move to approve. The motion is made by the mayor of Dededo. Is there a second? Second. Second by the mayor of Barragada. Any discussion on this motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All who oppose? No opposition, the motion carries. We'll move on to our guest speakers. Our first guest speaker will be uh, from the from Leaf. Uh, may I please ask everyone to please mute your mute your um, microphones if you are not speaking, so that we don't have to hear what you are doing on that side of the world. Please go, bossy. Uh, Andrea, are you here with us? Uh, present. Good morning. You may begin. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, can I share a slide? Um, you so you guys can. just have visuals. You certainly can. Okay. Cool. Um, share desktop. Share. Oh. Do can you grant me access to share? Yes. There. There. You do have access. Everyone has access. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Share. Share. Sorry, but um, I would like to start. Uh, thank you for having me today. Um, my name is Andrea Muir and um, my company is called LEAF. Um, here at LEAF, um, we recycle leaves. Um, I sent a few of you guys, or I think the, all the mayors, I sent you guys all um, a list of leaves that we recycle around our island. And I just wanted to let our community know um, what we're doing and what we're trying to help our island with, with reducing our waste. Um, yeah, um, we recycle um, these palm leaves um, that are around our island and that usually end up as trash, uh, mostly in uh, the burning piles in most yards or just thrown and disposed, or actually most of them just sit in parks or on the side of the road and take forever to biodegrade. So this is just a small a uh, foxtail palm leaf that I have um, and we recycle these and we make them into plates, reusable eco-friendly plates uh, that are 100% biodegradable and eco-friendly. They're made here. Uh, there's, no, um, there's no preservatives, there's um, no chemicals added to it. And yeah, um, we want to educate the community, our school kids, um, and just everybody around the island of what we're doing and letting them know that we're going around picking up leaves and cleaning our island um, one leaf at a time, basically. <laughs> and we're gonna make them into something new for our island. Uh, that's 100% locally made. Can I hear you? Yeah. You can. yeah. And it's to reduce also their waste of importing the single use styrofoam and plastic plates that usually end up in our ocean and on our parks, um, stuff like that. Yeah. And that's pretty much I have to say, my screen won't allow me to share. I have to like do another setting, but yeah, I will love to provide you guys with some flyers and information that you can share with your community or anybody interested in uh, donating the leaves or asking us um we can pick them up we pick them up freely from uh on our routes uh basically do like a i guess the best example would say is like a newspaper route i have a few residents already that i do on the weekends where i go and pick up all their leaves and yeah just clean help clean up their yard and we make them into something new yeah i can actually send you the slides when i'm done my like i said my computer won't allow me i have to reset the whole entire thing um and that's pretty much it. I believe Jonia Mayor um, has helped share my information. I've got a lot from Jonia that has called and we pick up quite a few leaves and um, we're starting to make something new out of them. And I think that's it, <laughs> really short. Any questions? Does anyone have any questions uh, for the guest speaker? Oh, the mayor of uh, Chalampag Ward is recognized. 
Hi. Thank you. That came, hi, good morning. Thank you, good Mr. Morning. President. You know, the only question I really have is when you pick up these leaves, these uh, palm leaves, you know, be it coconut, uh, right? You're picking up coconut, betel nut. Oh, um, not the coconut one. The coconut one is the only one I don't pick up right now. We're still testing, but the main ones are like your foxtail, royal palm, betel nut, bottleneck, the Christmas tree, the pugo one. Um, yeah, the one with the the soft sheath. This is called the sheath, the bottom of the tree. Yeah, sure. the coconut one right now is we're trying to figure out what we can do with it. And then eventually we're adapting and trying our other local leaves that we have around island. But so far we're starting with this set. So basically like how you would recycle different types of plastic or cardboard. Most people know that they cannot throw your pizza boxes in the cardboard recycling. So pretty much the same concept, but eventually we want to evolve and try to recycle everything for our island and create into something new. So we're going to use the entire leaf. So if you see the top part, I don't know if you see it, the top part of these, the, the leaves, we're turning that into mulch. So a lot of the, the people that we meet, they want to keep uh, the leaf so they can create mulch, but we want to help that process and, and donate the mulch back to them and stuff like that for them helping us. And it's a full circle for it's not just about me, it's about the whole community and really for the future of our children and our island, because in truth, our landfill is already filled up and where else are we going to dump our trash? Yeah. But yeah. Well, I mean, uh, OK, so I, I guess that's the heart of the question is that the leaves that you do take, you're taking the entire leaf, exactly. you're not just yes. taking, you know, being nope. selective of what you take and then leaving the residue or the residual behind. Nope, nope, yeah, but some people, like we met a rescue residents that want to keep the top part, and we're fine, we can cut it off right then and there, but um, yeah, but most of the time, we take the whole leaf, I'm taking the whole leaf with me, yeah, not leaving any trash, because that's majority of the problem that people, uh, I find that they just throw it in the burning pile, or across in their neighbor's jungle yard, and pretty much, it just ends up there and pretty much that pile becomes a dumping pile for other people to start dumping so it's like this chain reaction so yeah pretty much pick up everything okay, that was my only question thank you okay thank you too the vice mayor of mingila is recognized I guess. And congratulations and biba mingila thank yes yes very good initiative so uh you were saying that you can make them into like recycled like plates do you have samples of the things you've already made or is that going to oh, be a yes. Oh, definitely. I do have, uh, we, my dad started with our own few samples. So I have a few plates here. This is one plate we made. And this is a big like tray kind of ish. I don't know. Sorry, my video. But yeah, we have a few samples. So my update, my machine is already here. So uh, we have forks, spoons, plates, bowls, food containers, um, eco cups that can be used as a planting cup and also as a drinking cup or painting you name it so really my goal is like to meet with you guys which is great because you're the heart of the community and you have these chats with the community just to let them know that what we're doing because uh like i know a lot of people are iffy nowadays people are going on their yard so i just want the community to know that we're just here to help and we rather meet them face to face and uh get to know them a little bit more but uh, yeah, um, I'm going to do a lot of outreach later on. I did get a grant with the, with Kaha to do a lot of uh, for school and the community so we can all work together and and make this a beautiful process for our island and try to make it 100 percent uh, sustainable and, and make it work. Yeah. Thank you, Greg Ellinger. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Kevin. The mayor, Mingila, is recognized. Congrats, Andrea. Thank you again. A really great, beautiful uh, project you got. In fact, um, I just want to share that uh, I did see some of the process of how they were, Andrea first kicked off. So uh, when I went by on top of the roof, they had a lot of these leaves laid out on top. And uh, I was intrigued. And I asked, I said, so what do we got going on here? She said, uh, Dad and mentioned you were working on a project. So I'm really glad and proud to see this project or two in this way. I've also wanted to inquire, upon getting all these uh, stuff, I believe you said, Tonya, uh, Mayor's been helping out. Where, where are you storing the, the items? Do you, are they, do you have a special place for the residents? Oh, yes. So, um, so, like, when I pick them up and I store them? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, so we have, um, 
my dad, I'm taking his art room and that's becoming our storage facility. And then we're building our own. Uh, but yeah, we, once we pick up the leaves, they're clean, they're sanitized and washed and then they're stored. So the process. So right now I would love if I could show you my, my front of my dad's art room or the basic of the room is filled with sheets. So we've been doing this starting since November. We've been just trying to connect with the community and make them understand what we're doing because a lot of people are scratching their heads. Like, why are we taking the leaves? Like, I don't know if you ever see me run across the road. I'll go to the airport, put those, those giant sheets. I will do anything to recycle them because they're such a very versatile product. And I'm only touching the surface of it. And if more of the community is known and involved and aware, there's so much more I can create, which I can show you something really quick. Um, I just made a, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, wait, where's the camera, camera? This is a, okay, sorry, but I have a notebook in my hand and it's made from the leaf. It's a different type of, I adapted it to a different type, but this is what I want the kids to make. And it's made with recycled paper inside. I work at the post right now and we, we have so much unused paper that, yeah, it's, it's a notebook notebook a pretty sturdy notebook <laughs> and then I've also made um the uh paper pencils and I believe I don't know what my dad said he used to make this but um I also am 100% recycling this pencil and made a new pencil out of it yeah with paper this is made out of paper 100% paper yeah yeah <laughs> that's nice uh the mayor of Zona is recognized hi 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 good morning Good morning. Everyone, yeah, I just want to ask how how long and how much of the sheet would it take to make one of those plates that you just uh, that you just oh, showed, showed us? It takes less than a minute to make the plate from the wow. machine. Yeah, so we're just building up our stock because right now it's everybody's just throwing it everywhere. So most of the people now are meeting like. Uh, you guys in Jonia, we've got a few where they're like, they go to your green waste area and they dump it, right? So some of them have called us and we just arranged that, just throw it outside your yard in a pile and we'll come pick it up. And we have a few, we've done an agate. So we just want to connect with the community because like I said, it's more of a security thing. Everybody's very iffy of people coming on their yards. <laughs> but yeah, um, so we're just collecting. I am just collecting as much as I can and I will keep collecting to make more and more products and really um this is more of the beginning part is more for our to to inform the community and to inform our students and kids and i think it would be a great um thing to show at school i have a nephew who's autistic and he helps me every day we right. go and get leaves and he's so involved and immersed in it and i would just love to show the other kids what we can do in recycling instead of just throwing these leaves away or burning it which yeah yeah, so, so much to Thanks. do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. I know that I, I did receive uh, your flyer and, and the communication from you. And so we're excited to, to collect uh, for this project or for, for your efforts, because we, we do have a lot of that. In, in the yeah, building. yeah. Thanks and hopefully so I want to eventually, uh, we're working on getting containers or, you know, where they the community can just go and dispose of it at the container or we can just set up a site at the mayor's office. Um, yeah, instead of it just, because it really is sad that when I see it ready brought in and I'm like, oh man, there's so much material I could have made out of that. And there's also another local artist that I want to partner with. She creates beautiful work with these things that we've come up with an idea. And honestly, I, I just have such big dreams of what this could do for Guam and what we what so much more we can do because it started in India, it's in the Philippines, it's everywhere else in all these small Asian countries and yet we're a small island and we haven't done it yet. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Mayor Melissa. You know, I just want to say thank you to Andrea because Andrea actually came to our Municipal Planning Council meeting yes. and she actually addressed our, our council. So you know, it's good when you advertise your meeting dates and times because people come. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so she was our, our public uh, uh, input and participation. And she, so she was, while she was waiting for us to go into the set, you know, to have our, start our meeting, she was actually going around the, the facility to even include the church across the street. Yeah. 
Yeah, let me know when you meet me. But, you know, um, our council members, yeah, our council members actually, uh, you know, told her that, you know, go down the buffer strip park and, and stuff like that. And so, you know, I see that people are putting stuff out along the roadway. So she knows where to go pick those things up. But thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you for having me. Yes. And I would love to sit in your smaller meetings and I can explain more and show more visuals. I know more, most people are visual learners. So yeah, anytime, but I will be contacting you to set up like little shops or workshops and uh, just to have the community get involved with it. Cause it's really, really fun. Yeah. Sure, that's great. Um, any, any other mayor, vice mayor have uh, a question or concern for Andrea? If not, thank you. you if you didn't receive a communication from her, uh, Andrea, you can just give us, you know, send us through our, our uh, Mayor's Council email and we'll certainly get it out to everyone again. Okay. Thank I you will. so much. Thank, we, thank you too. Thank you guys for efforts. having me. Hey, thank, thank, you. thank you. And your timing is awesome. great. And your timing is great. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you all. Thank you all for your help. I wouldn't have done it if uh, you guys didn't reach out to the community and stuff like that. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. We're excited. Thank you. I think we're all excited for you too. That it's a great, great uh, endeavor. This is Mossy Andrea. Awesome. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. You too. We're going to move on to our next guest speaker, uh, Lawrence Limchako. Uh, Mr. Limchako, are you present? Mayor and uh, uh, mayors and vice mayors, thank you for taking the time to um, accept my um, audience uh, request for our audience. So. Um, I have worked with a few mayors so far. So Mayor um, and Vice Mayor Barragada, of course, uh, Mayor McDonald um, have hosted the United States Navy Sea Cadets. Um, I have some slides, if I could be allowed to share a screen here. Yes, you're able to share. Okay, okay so um, does everybody see this? Hang on a second. Yeah, I'm technically challenged. I could I could fix trucks and bulldozers and everything else, but uh, when it comes to computers, it's uh, it's not the easiest for me. But do you see my uh, my slides so far? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, um, United States Navy Sea Cadets. Um, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with it, but it is a youth organization. And it's been on Guam for, I want to say, um, 30 years now, um, if I get my math right, um, who we are um, and our legacy. So, um, again, we are a federally charted nonprofit civilian youth organization. I'm not going to read this all, but uh, we take uh, kids from ages 10 to 17 and we teach them or we mentor them in the nautical theme, so US Navy and Coast Guard, okay? Um, and we also mentor them in, um, you know, core values that can make them or have them become good civic leaders as well, okay? Um, here's our beginning. It started um, back in 59, the, uh, 58, they um, recognized that they, um, uh, a youth organization that would be uh, tailored to um, uh, teaching the youth the nautical theme would help uh, eventually have these cadets, they're called cadets, uh, move and uh, move up and, and join the Navy and be uh, familiar with how the Navy works. Um, chartered in, uh, by Congress in 1962, um, Again, it's been on Guam for 30 years. Um, this is um, a demographics of where it's at. It's kind of not blown up, but uh, it's all over the US, uh, including Puerto Rico, Hawaii, um, and Guam now. Uh, so uh, what we do, our mission, there's two different missions. We have what is known as the Navy Lee Cadets, uh, which are the younger, um, cadets, they start at 10 years old and they go up as uh, old as 13. Once they reach the age of 13 and a half, then they'll graduate to what is known as the Sea Cadets. The Sea Cadets have, um, their mission is a little bit different. It's um, 
the lead cadets, we just kind of teach them the basics. And then when they get to the sea cadets, we actually um, push them um, doing physical training, giving them missions, allowing them to lead the lead, lead cadets um, and giving them the opportunity um, uh, to grow and, uh, and work as the, uh, the uh, lead petty officers and uh, give, give them more responsibilities. So the, the lead cadets are the younger ones and then the sea cadets are the older ones. And you can be a sea cadet all the way up until you're 18 years old and still in high school. Once you graduate from high school and you graduate from the program, um, when you enter, let's say you decide to enlist in the Navy, um, you will enlist at a pay grade of E3. So if anybody understands the military, E1 is your entry level and then E3, you get a, you know, a better pay grade. So um, this is an organization that can allow them to get all of those basics before they go to boot camp. So when they come out of boot camp, they're already uh, uh, getting an increased pay grade. Um, we have advanced training. So recently some of our cadets, uh, um, 10 years old, um, managed to get a um, junior dive certification so they could dive up to 60 feet, one fathom, um, which is all paid for by the national um, uh, organization. The cadets had to pay um, a small fee um, to get registered, but then the um, um, national gave them $250 to buy all their gear. And after that, um, they paid for the entire training. So all, um, we have like 14 that are dive certified. Pretty impressive for a 10 year old kid uh, to get dive certified. Um, you, all the cadets use uniforms. So we have dress whites and we also have um, NWUs, which is our daily work uniform, camouflage green uniforms. Um, again, that is given to the cadets. If we have used ones, we have them tailored. If we have to buy them new ones, uh, sometimes the parents have to help to uh, get involved. Um, training our next generation. So this is uh, next generation of leaders, okay? Eventually these cadets may not all go into the military. Some might uh, run for mayor, some might run for vice mayor, some might, might run for senators. We don't know, but we want to try to, anybody that enters our program, try to mentor them to be the best person they could be, right? Um, I, I started with uh, C Cadets three years ago, and I'm one of those parents that when my kid gets involved in something, I get involved with it. Um, if they're a softball player, I'm the coach, and I teach them softball um, uh, clinics, and I do all of that stuff. My son wanted to get into C Cadets. I had no idea what it was like to be in the military, never been prior military. Um, so I had to learn a lot uh, doing this. But uh, now I'm a big part of the Sea Cadets and I want to try to help them uh, grow because I feel that this is a awesome uh, experience for kids. Um, and not a lot of people know about it. The next slide, so um, I'm not, uh, this slide is, uh, a slide of our cadets this last past week. Our cadets went through a five day training uh, starting at 7.30 in the morning and getting done at 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, they ate breakfast on the Emory S land, which is a sub tender. They ate lunch on the Emory S land and they learned how to uh, drive and command a submarine. They got into the actual submarine trainers and actually uh, trained as a submarine uh, submariner. Um, it was a five-day course and all the cadets graduated with flying colors. So I'm very impressed with them. Um, so I do have some more slides if you, if you just indulge me a little bit here. Um, the uh, program, it's good for the uh, community. Uh, cadets uh, perform community service. Any of the mayors need cadets uh, to help with community service. They just need a, we just need to schedule it so we can come out there and help them out. Um, cadets connect with local uh, veterans. Uh, we do a lot of um, 
Veterans Day work. We've been <coughs> we've been down to uh, Veteran Veteran Cemetery doing the uh, brief across America. Uh, we've done some cleaning and painting down at the Veteran Cemetery. So we get involved as much as we can with our veterans and uh, and all the programs that are out there for them. Uh, good for the armed forces and good for the uh, the uh, youth. I'm sorry, I'm at work, so if it's real loud, I'm I'm hoping that you could hear me. Can I get a thumbs up? Everybody could hear me. Yep. Okay. Perfect. I'll keep going. Uh, this is just a, uh, a comment from one of our uh, 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 national uh, commanders. And uh, our, our battalion is called the Mariano's Pareto Battalion Division. So I'm, I'm just going to finish up here. Um, how can we assist the community, various community projects, perform color guard duty when requested? Yes, some of these kids um, are able to do color guard duties if you need them. Um, we just need to coordinate it. Uh, we could recruit other cadets and mentor them and do peer mentoring. So peer mentoring, of course, you understand that is, uh, you know, learning from one of, learning from your peers, good peers, of course, you know, uh, what's right, what's wrong. Um, they, they, they have cadets that are, that are disciplined and so they can learn from them. Uh, we give them leadership roles so that they could become leaders. Um, we, you know, it could be as easy as uh, running the PT, taking uh, uh, our intake um, temperatures and asking all the COVID questions. We would make a staff, uh, one of the cadets be the staff uh, uh, officer for that to, to do that. And we share that. Um, so the reason why I'm asking for audience with the mayors is I want to be able to do a roving drill. So I want to be able to go to all the mayor's offices, one, one, mayor's op one mayor's office a month, right? Bring our cadets. If any of the mayors feel that they might have a village youth that might be interested in um, joining, maybe, maybe you know, I wouldn't say that there, there might be the questionable youth, but if, if there's anything that we could help to help with peer mentoring, we could invite them and they could be, they could, you know, come and watch us drill, understand what we do, maybe get in, be interested in it. it. It does cost, it's a, it's $200 a year. And, but you get all the, you, you get uniforms and you get uh, uh, annual training and there's a lot uh, you get for $200. But uh, if there's maybe families that can't afford it, maybe what we could do is look around and see if we can find sponsors to get them sponsored in the cadet uh sea cadets and again it's it's just all um a way to get ourselves out there um you know we could drill for a couple hours and if the mayors need some help cleaning up something we could work for the mayors for the next couple of hours so it, you know it's all I'm, I'm just playing this by ear um hoping that maybe uh we could get um we could get more uh youth involved and see if maybe this could help uh, um, the mayors um, with, with um, getting some of their uh, youth to be part of the cadet, the sea cadets. So that's all I have for you. I could take questions. If anybody wants to ask a question, um, Again. Sure, Larry. So thanks for the presentation. I think um, I think it's a great program for our youth. Um, and I, I think perhaps May I suggest that you go ahead and develop a, a schedule that you think is going to work best for your team and uh, share it with us. You can send it to Elaine, our, our council secretary, and, and then we can share it with the mayors. If the mayors are okay with the date uh, that, you've, um, you know, that you've selected and the mayor is willing to work with you, then we'll, you know, we can confirm that schedule with you. Uh, I think that might be the best the best uh, route to get to around the villages. What do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, so, you know, uh, what we could do is get a uh, plan of the year, which is uh, the POY plan of the year. And 
we we drill every first and third Saturday of the month. Right. And so if you can go ahead and based on your plan of the year, you can include the, the villages that you would like to, to go to, uh, the 19, and then we'll share it with the with the mayors. And if again, if it fits with their schedule and it's something that they want to uh, subscribe to, then we can confirm that with you. I think that works out. Uh, any mayor or vice mayor uh, have anything to chime in? Um, or do you disagree with my suggestion to, to Larry? Are uh, the mayor of Dededo's recognized? Larry, thank you. Uh, I remember uh, several years ago, um, we used to have sea cadets picked up at our office uh, during drill weekends. Uh, the van actually came to pick them up. Is there any way, um, I mean, are you guys recruit? I hear that you have great programs in there. Uh, I, I'm willing to accommodate uh, your your vice mayor and I are actually willing to accommodate drills here in Dedida with the sea cadets. Uh, we're very familiar with the operations of the USS Emory land as well. And uh, we've had volunteers from there come out to our communities. But we, um, you know, we also want to maybe recommend that some children from some of our youths to uh, sign up and enlist to be a part of sea cadets. Um, so I, I did, I heard some of what you were asking, but uh, thanks. That would really help us out. Um, I was not involved when they were picking up uh, cadets up in Denido, but I do, um, you know, uh, we're, we're do, we pick them up now at Chamorro Village and we pick them up at Micronesia Mall and then we, we transport them onto Navy Base. So this is going to help us twofold. Okay, so we used to have a facility at the uh, old McCool gym in Santa Rita. And we had a really nice facility, air conditioned gym. I mean, it was awesome. And we could we could house when we do our boot camps. We have seven days worth of boot camp. The cadets stay there 24 hours a day. Um, and this is where we wake them up in the morning at four in the morning. We march them. We have them shine their shoes. We have them fold their clothes. We put their put all of their stuff in the sea bag. We take everything out of the sea bag. We just I mean, we're just constantly keeping them busy, right? By the third day, most of them want to go home, but uh, they got to tough it out for the next, you know, five days. But um, when COVID hit, they took that facility away and they turned it into a COVID hospital. I understand. I mean, that's best for the community, right? Um, then they stuck us in a uh, shared MWR facility where um, if, let's say, we have a cadet that's running late and they don't show up to the bus on time, um, because mom and dad decided to stop by Infusion and buy uh, coffee, uh, the cadet's not going to, to drill that day. So if we could get somewhere outside where we're at the Barragata Mayor's office, we're at the Derido Mayor's office, we're at the Agania Heights Mayor's office, um, the Manila's uh, Mayor's office, they could show up late. Now, of course, they will probably do a couple extra push-ups for, for that, but uh, they will show up late and they could still be part of the drill. Um, I understand that the Navy is a fighting base and I get it, but uh, access is just too difficult. If you're not a military dependent and you're a civilian, well, um, you're gonna have problems getting in. So that we try to make that buffer, but we can't always be there for a cadet that's late. So having it at the mayor's office would be uh, awesome for us um, until we could, work on a permanent facility. That's the that's one of the reasons why this would work out perfect for us. I know during COVID, um, we had we had uh, uh, access to certain mayor's office. And of course, I thank them for that. Um, we followed every single protocol. I mean, we were taking temperatures and, you know, doing all everything we needed to do. So we got it all documented. Okay, Larry, we need to move on. Uh, the mayor of Manila is recognized. We we have uh, a minute left in this presentation, so uh, the mayor of Manila is recognized. Larry, I just want to thank you, and uh, yes, I'm still pushing the the interest out and, and encouraging them to join. So I just want to commend you again and continue to do this effort, and you've been doing it for quite some time. And um, <clears throat> if there's anything else that we can do here in Manila, you got our support here as well. Okay, I appreciate that. And thank you uh, again, mayors, um, vice mayors. Uh, 
President Alec. I really appreciate you taking the, uh, the time to allow me to present my uh, uh, spew on the sea cadets. I'm sorry, I, I not no recycling here. I do uh, I do get involved in it. I mean, many of you might know we do we do a lot of recycling, but uh, I'm not building any plates, so kind of hard act to follow. But thank you again. I appreciate it and hope to uh, be able to be a part of your communities, whether I'm helping. And I'm mentoring kids, and we're and we're changing our youth one cadet at a time. Okay. I agree, Larry. Thank you so much, and I do appreciate the we appreciate the presentation. I think if you just reach out to us with your with a with a yearly schedule, uh, whatever works for you, uh, you certainly be able to to work with every mayor individually as far as the location and and the the date and time that works for both uh, you and the mayor. Uh, so great. Thank you so much. And, and I, we look forward to a schedule and working with you. Okay. Thank you again. Uh, okay, thank you. Sorry. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Okay. Adios. Uh, we, our next speak, uh, speaker, um, Dr. Ann Pobutsky, she is online. Good morning. Yes, I'm here. I apologize. Can you see no my worries. screen? Yes, oh, Yeah, I had a phone call. I have a 24-7 phone call. I have to use. Can fine. you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Yes, Thank yes, you yes, for yes. having us um, and all the mayors of Guam. You've been helpful to public health in the past, and we hope to cooperate and work with you in the future. One of the things we're doing, in addition to 90% of our time is dealing with COVID, is we're going to do a health disparity survey. And we're part of that survey involves going out to all the villages, house to house. I'm trying to get my screen. There we go. This is our main team for the health disparity survey. There's myself. Uh, I'm the territorial epidemiologist. Zach Crocker is our CDC Public Health Prevention Fellow. He's here with us for two years. He just got here in October. We hope to hire um, uh, LaDonna Ngeki once we start hiring people as a co-lead survey coordinator. We're gonna have a part-time fellow from PIHOA. Uh, we have UOG student nurses who are mainly gonna be at the testing sites doing surveys there. And we are hiring uh, RCOG uh, field survey coordinators. RCOG stands for the Research Corporation of the University of Guam. That's how we're, we're court conducting our survey. We're transferring money to RCOG so we can hire people and try and get this survey done in the next year. So we're gonna be hiring coordinators and I will give you guys the announcements once we start hiring if you have people who might be interested in working in the field, going village to village for the next year. This survey is funded by the CDC and it's all states are getting health disparities grants because what they're finding is that um, ethnic minorities, at least in the US and of course here, are disproportionately more likely to get sick and die of COVID. So as I mentioned, through this MOA with RCOG, we're gonna conduct an island-wide survey um, of all high risk and hard to reach populations. We got approval from the University of Guam Human Subjects Research Committee, even though it's not um, technically research and we're not taking names, um, we did get approval to conduct the study or this, this uh, it's actually applied epidemiology, shoe leather epidemiology is what we call it. And again, we've seen um, Disproportionate numbers of Micronesians, Chukis and Ponapeans and other Micronesians, as well as our Chamorro and Filipino population um, dying of COVID and of course getting COVID. So we do need help from the village mayors to identify the geographic areas, places, apartment buildings or homes with at-risk populations. You guys helped us when we did the, had the dengue outbreak and we're asking for your help again. And also we wanna make sure that you know that we will have teams in all of the villages um, for the next year so that you're aware of this. And, and we wanna closely work with the village mayors when we go to your villages and start the survey. We're 
deliberately sampling um, based on housing criteria. So we're looking at areas that we kind of already know about and you already know about um, in our villages where we have high risk populations. We're also gonna be working hopefully with Gura to identify section eight housing as well. Well, what do we mean by high risk populations? So low income housing, people with um, living in close quarters is what they call it. It's basically overcrowded housing. If you have 30 people living in a five bedroom house, some of them might be just sleeping on the floor. That's what we saw during the Shigella outbreak. And that's kind of a, one of our target populations. We also saw during the Shigella outbreak, some places, some people are just camping out. Uh, there's homeless people and squatters or they're living in substandard housing. Um, and you get, hopefully you guys can help identify those areas as well as homeless shelters. Now we're only, we're not using any names on this survey. It is anonymous. We do ask for a household contact for each household so that we can um, provide them with gas coupons. If they complete the surveys, they'll get $20 worth of gas coupons. And we're asking about the age, sex, and ethnicity of all household members, school, job, employment. And we're asking what happened during 2020 and 2021. We also wanna see how families have coped during COVID, especially if they're at risk populations. Did they get food stamps? Were they laid off? We know the kids were out of school but we just wanna get some of the details on their um, economic situation and coping. We're also gonna be asking health status questions, uh, health insurance question, you know, did they lose health insurance during the first two years of the pandemic? Uh, we're asking about testing and vaccination and healthcare access, and as well as the housing information um, on the conditions of the house or tent if they're camping out and if they have sanitary facilities, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna provide you with this presentation and a blank copy of the survey at the end of this um, meeting. And this is our proposal for conducting the survey. We wanna start small, because it's likely that as RCOG begins hiring, we're gonna have a small group of people. So we're gonna start small, we're gonna start in the small villages, uh, Umatic, Marizzo, that sort of thing. That's our draft schedule. And it's gonna go on for the whole year because the last few months of the survey will end up in Dedido, our most populated village. And we will be uh, doing follow-ups for all the questionnaires at the testing sites and the surveys, we're actually conducting them already here at public health uh, for health, when people come for health clearances. And this is just some background information that we, we know about um, and why we're dealing with housing as a criteria because it's definitely one of those social determinants of health that we know is linked to outbreaks and um, especially when you live in multiple generational houses and overcrowded housing it, it can prevent you from di social distancing and that's why we see a lot of times big households get everybody gets infected with covid and that's it that's our intro to our survey any questions When, when do you think you're, when will you be starting this? Uh, February. Oh, sorry. I, I don't know. If, I'm sorry if I missed that. Okay. That's I'm great. sorry. Let me put it up again. Does anyone else have any questions? Mayors or vice mayors? Okay, great. And so you'll be reaching out to us, right? You'll be your the the staff at Public Health is always good about coming out to us. Yes, they will. Yes, they will be contacting each village mayor as we start this process. Okay. Well, I don't know if any mayor has a, a concern or a question about the the um, survey at this point, but if we do, we certainly will get in touch with you and we'll speak with the the staff that come out to to uh, to conduct the survey. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I'll just ask one more time, mayors or vice mayors, anyone have a question or a concern that they want to raise? Okay, I don't see any hands. Well, thank you for your time <laughs> and <laughs> that's <was> great. <laughs> well, we'll be speaking to you soon then. Okay. Okay, thanks so much.
We'll move on to the uh, executive director's report, Angel. Hi, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. First of all, I'd just like to uh, express on behalf of our office here, our condolences to Mayor Alec and his staff uh, on the passing of uh, their dedicated employee, Mike Tahaji. Please express our condolences to his wife and children and his family. Let us know how, how we can help. It's been a, a whirlwind past week here, uh, you know, with <clears throat> New Year's Eve, we got notice uh, from BBMR that uh, the governor is releasing $8.8 million to the Mayor's Council of Guam uh, for the purposes that we had sent in, in a, a while back as far as what our needs are. I wouldn't have been new business and going to executive session to discuss that because it, it may take another 30 minutes. And then whatever we decide from there, we go back into a regular meeting and vote on the option that, uh, and this has to do with, with, with funding, of course. Uh, but the ARPA money is uh, going to be available to our offices. The initial release is uh, $8.3 million uh, based on, as I said, what we have submitted uh, for our needs. And it includes uh, uh, different things, heavy equipment, uh, vehicles, recycling, uh, payment for what was the shortfall in FY21's uh, SMD, island-wide beautification of public safety for us. So if we get to new business and you approve all of you. As far as the COVID pay, uh, as you are aware, again, just before the new the New Year's, uh, the ARPA money was able to be released in the amount of 190 somewhat thousand dollars. And we were able to pay five pay periods of, of COVID. And, and uh, we're looking forward of paying uh, the remaining of and so we thank all of you for, for your patience. I thank, uh, like I said, uh, Mayor Hoffman for always, uh, and, and our president for always bringing this up to the governor's office, and uh, Joanne for uh, keeping up with all of your staff to make sure that these paid timesheets are all submitted. As far as the uh, memorandum of uh, agreement with EPA, uh, it's taken a while. It's been there actually uh, since uh, October at the AG's office uh, due to a misunderstanding, I, be I believe, based on my request to have the AG's office uh, opine on what we have to do to remove uh, abandoned vehicles on public easements. Uh, one of the attorneys there took it as, as the program that we're doing with EPA, which it is not. Um, as you all know, the vehicles that we collect uh, through the recycling revolving fund with EPA are vehicles that we get uh, the release of liability from. And so once that was cleared up and the attorney general understood that, uh, he did sign off on the agreement actually a couple of days ago. So the new story that came out yesterday was actually incorrect because he had signed that agreement the day before. The only thing that we still have to work on and we have to engage the legislature with this is to amend the public law, the statute that is now on how to deal with abandoned vehicles on public easements. Because right now uh, there is a process. It has to go to an impound lot. It has to be assessed by revenue tax. It has to be, depending on the value of, of the vehicle, either it goes to or a, a junk uh, recycling center or it goes to out for auction. So that portion we still have to work on with um, with the attorney general's office, the legislature and DPW. It doesn't mean that can't, we can't remove the cars on public easement. All it means is that if we do remove it, it can't go to the recycling center. 
it has to go to uh, a designated lot. And in this case, we, we may ask EPA to allow us some funds to contract um, a um, junkyard as it is now, the tow trucks lot and contract somebody to use their lots as a, a, an impound lot for the time being while, until the governor's office uh, finds a suitable designated place for an impound, impound lot. So that MOA has been signed. It's going back to the governor for her signature. And once it's done there, then it goes to DOA for uh, uploading into our accounts. And hopefully, I know most of, many of you have been anxious of get, getting these funds going because the, the recyclables are piling up in your villages. Hopefully, uh, we can get some of those purchase orders out for these abandoned vehicles by next week. No, I just, meeting. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the mayor of Malesso, did you have a question regarding um, abandoned vehicles? Or the recycling revolving fund? Mayor Chargolev, are you are you there? Okay, we can come back to Mayor Chargolev. Um, Angel, I'm sorry, you may continue. Okay, um, quarterly reports, uh, you all know it's um, due uh, by the 10th of this month. I thank uh, those of you that have already started sub submitting them and these are for your, uh, your expenditures in our budget. Uh, under the VOMS and also your NAFs. Uh, so we all know the drill. So uh, we expect everyone to be in compliance by January 10th so that we can uh, put this on our website. And the quarterly meeting with the governor and Lieutenant Governor, I believe, is on the 12th, Mr. President, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct, yes. On the 12th at uh, 7 30 in the morning, over at um, Three Squares mm -hmm. in Timoni. So that's January 12th. Three Squares, we are the host uh, for this meeting. So that's why it's, it's, uh, it's there. Other Wait, than that, that's, that's all. Is it, is it appropriate to, to ask? Angel, I'm sorry, is it appropriate to ask for the approval on the expenditure at this point, or do we make it part of new business? I just forgot about that. I apologize. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we, we, we can ask for the approval of the expenditure. Okay, so with, um, with the quarterly breakfast uh, members, we initially uh, approved the 450 uh, for the just to host the quarterly breakfast with the governor and alternating uh, times with the governor and and the mayor's council, so it is our turn. Um, and because we want to keep everything COVID safe, uh, we feel that a, a restaurant is able to to serve us properly and we're able to uh, to meet um, and not have any issues with uh, you know with um, transmission and so forth. And so that means that we're going to spend a little bit more than the 450. Uh, could we? Could I please have a motion to um, to spend no more than $600 or, or around $600? It's probably uh, maybe no more than $700 is better. So, uh, so move, Mr. President. I make the okay. motion. Is there a second? I second. I second. Uh, okay. The motion is made by the mayor of Sinahanya, and it is second seconded by the mayor of Inalahan. Any further discussion on this motion? I would like to say that uh, in order to keep the budget within the budget, uh, we have the officers have selected two menu items, uh, one with meat and one that is a vegetarian a breakfast that we feel uh, you will all be satisfied with. And of course, you're, you're able to order whatever drinks or beverage you'd like. Uh, that's part of the discussion. Any other discussion on this motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Hi. 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 All who oppose. Seeing 
seeing no opposition, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. You may continue. Yeah, so that's the spring. That's all I have. And you, like, like I said, when we get into new business, we'll, we'll put up uh, our uh, at the uh, you know decision of the body. We can go into executive session to discuss it. And then after that, we move back out into regular meeting to, to vote on whatever the decisions are. That's fine. Uh, the mayor, Melissa, is recognized once again. Mayor Chargloff. Okay, we'll, we'll continue. Um, moving into committee reports. Are there any boards and commissions that would like to, to report out, please? None at this time. Okay, uh, standing committees, any reports on standing committees? I do have uh, two, two items for discussion or a proposal. Uh, one on the legislative and finance committee side. Uh, I was sent a bill uh, by Senator Moylan. It is bill 234-46. And it is relative to establishing a public private partnership for the installation of video security cameras in public areas. So we have not taken a, a look at it in the committee, but it was sent to me for our consideration. I'm not gonna ask for a vote on, uh, on support or not to support the bill at this point. What I would like to say is that we will share it with everyone and perhaps you can take a look at it and see if we are willing to either send a letter of support, uh, send comments to Senator Moylan. Uh, I think uh, he introduced this bill before the incident in Humatek. Uh, I looked at that date and that was, uh, you know, I think for me, uh, and I know that maybe at one point, uh, the mayor of Dededo had, we had a discussion about having cameras at, uh, at the illegal dump site areas, right? And so if, if this type of initiative will fund those, uh, those areas um, or those, those areas of concern, perhaps might, we might want to consider it. Uh, if we have suggestions for the Senator on the bill, I think this is a good time to, to uh, address that. Um, again, I'm not gonna ask for any further discussion on it other than letting you know that it was sent to us for consideration and that we'll, we'll forward it all to you. Uh, the mayor of Chalampal Gordon is recognized. And thank you, Mr. President. You know, I, I, I saw the bill and I actually read the bill as I was going through <clears throat> Last week, the uh, recent bills that were introduced. And, you know, I guess the question I have is, has Senator Moylan's office even engaged with uh, the companies that can provide this kind of service and whether or not that's something viable to them as far as establishing these public-private partnerships, <clears throat> you know, for uh, CCTVs? Because really... I don't know of any any government entity that wouldn't be that would not be interested in trying to develop these public private partnerships. But if we don't have the private sector um, uh, engaged or interested in 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 taking advantage of these programs, it's it's moot. And so the question, because it doesn't appear that his office or his who's ever doing his research has actually had any discussions with any of these private companies to see whether or not it's, it's, it, it's deemed a viable uh, partnership that they might be interested in engaging upon. And if they're not gonna do it, I think that's something we should look at doing with the companies that, that uh, may be able to, or can provide it and can provide the service and see what they think about the bill. Sure, I, I can't answer to that question, uh, Mayor, because I, I don't know. Uh, we had not we have not had a have a had a legislative finance a committee meeting, and at that point, I think that was where the senator wanted to be invited to to speak about 
about his proposal. Uh, we'll certainly let everybody know if that meeting is going to be scheduled and, uh, and if he will be present. Um, and But at the same time, like I said, we'll send that, or you've already read it. So, but if you wanted to, to ask the question directly to him, please feel free to. But I, I, I can't answer it. And we certainly can, I certainly can send that to him. Hey, it's already lost. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 what's the meeting, or if and when a meeting is scheduled with the senator's office, I'd happily, I would happily uh, participate. Uh, I'm just well, saying that, yeah, it, it didn't appear that uh, there was any, uh, any, any research done with the private partnership. Well, well, like I said, we'll let you know when the when the committee meeting is called, and uh, we'll let everybody know when the committee meeting is called, and if you'll be present, and you could, uh, you certainly are welcome all the time. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm just going to ask. Well, any other any any um, discussion then on that bill? I don't. I can't answer any questions. I'm just proposing uh, informing everyone of the receipt of that bill. Um, I'll go ahead and continue with the, the last item on, on standing committees for me. Uh, on the feral swine, uh, I did have an, uh, another meeting with a group of, of people from the Southern uh, Soil and Water Conservation District and uh, AFES, uh, USDA. And so the, the plan really is for, for the soil, uh, Southern Soil and Water District, uh, Conservation District to purchase these of the traps that, that USDA has been using and uh, USDA will uh, hopefully assist us on the south, uh, central and south, southern areas to trap the pigs. Uh, what it is is that the USDA has six in the south and six in the north and they're active, uh, but it's obviously not enough to, to curb the, the feral swine issue. So we are working on it. We are, there is another meeting scheduled for the end of this month to talk about uh, the, the progress on the ordering of the new, the additional six uh, traps by uh, the Southern Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, that's the only update that I have on the feral swine. Any, um, the mayor of Melissa is recognized once again. Okay, we'll move on. Any other standing committees would like to report? If none, I would like to also bring up something about the stray animals. I know that uh, Mayor Paco has, has been the, the best advocate for us on, on that uh, stray animal side, but I'm, I'm having my own difficulties in PD and I'm not sure uh, we kind of have to wait for a dog to bite a resident in order for a game to get the dog. And so unfortunately, Mayor Paco, thank you for your, your, your willingness to always help us. Uh, but today I did have a, a dog that bit a resident and I could not wait to have, um, you know, to go through the process and gain will accept the dog now because the dog bit a resident. And I mean, if that's what we're gonna do is wait for dogs to bite people, then, you know, I mean, I, I, just, I don't understand what the situation is. And we've, Mayor Paco and I met with the Deputy Chief of Staff and the Director of Agriculture many months ago about the situation. And we had asked that the, that GAIN continue to uh, follow the, the agreement, which is to keep the dogs for a certain amount of time and then do what they need to do after that time is up. And I'm not sure if we're policing that and, uh, you know, I think we're coming to a point where if even us as a smaller village is experiencing that, then we kind of have, you know, we have just even a bigger problem. So I know that I'll be working with Mayor Paco on this. I know Mayor Paco has come to a point of frustration, really, uh, because we continue to talk about it, but there's there's no real, um, we have not seen the, the uh, light at the end of the tunnel on that. Uh, Mayor Paco, you're recognized. Sir, action speaks louder than words. You know, um, whatever happened to the funds for the um, um, additional kennels for for gain? I thought that thing was supposed to go out on a contract bid. You know, I feel your pain. Um, like this morning, I called up. PD had one dog. Barragat had two dogs. But there's no room. And 
I know I sound very repetitious, but we don't run a kennel business. We're doing our part as mayors to eradicate these dogs off the streets, but where are we going to store it? I know that there, there's funds for uh, additional kennels. When is that thing gonna, gonna take place? Mayor, I know that we, we like I said, we share, we share the same frustrations and I think we're just gonna have to, the two of us are just gonna have to make that a, a priority and that committed to, to, get, to um, get to the people again that need to, to answer us or help us with, the, with those answers. I'm just bringing it up at this portion of the meeting because I don't think we've seen any uh, real headway in that, uh, in the discussions that we've had many months ago. Exactly. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, but yes, please, please know that, um, that we'll be in touch on this. The Mayor of Minginla is recognized. Thank you, Mayor Alec, uh, President and uh, Mayor Paco. I would like to just add, if we can kindly as well follow up with, uh, like Mayor Paco said, we, we, when we had the meeting, we, had, we inquired for additional cages and the proper sneers and uh, the PPEs at that point of time to uh, try to regulate and, and work with the uh, animal health. As well as I know they've been trying to get some uh, employees on board and they, they hired some people. So <clears throat> just like uh, all of our concerns uh, that we share right now, even with getting the dogs and even, even trying to get support with the ones that claim that, they, that it's not their dog, but yet they feed it, and they want to help us catch it, we still can't take, turn it in. So that is the biggest challenging, the uh, challenges that we're facing is trying to, when we get these dogs, where are we going to put it? Because we have, it's going to be unfit if we just can't, we put it on the side, don't feed it and all that. We don't want to get charged or anything on our backs. But yet we still have to do the, the work as well. And, uh, you know, no shadow over any agency. It's just how do we, how do we overcome this and move forward this year? How do we overcome this and move forward this year? Thank you, Mayor Allen, and, and uh, you have always been supportive in this effort as well. And we've heard your concerns and you were a part of that meeting, um, obviously, because you stated very well what we had discussed. And so and that was the reason why I wanted to, to also mention it to everyone that, uh, you know, we'll work close, uh, a lot more closer with Mayor Paco on this uh, issue again, once again. Uh, the Mayor of Agani has his recognized. Thank you, Mayor. Um... You know, it's about time that we uh, revisit the, um, the people in charge of uh, uh, helping us get rid of this uh, stray animals. Because if we're going to depend on games, uh, I'm sorry. They're all animal lovers, and they're going to feel sorry for all the dogs. And uh, uh, we're going to run into the same problem that we've been running into for the past years. So I, I think we should revisit them and, and, and tell them that uh, if you're not going to take care of the strays that we uh, get every week or every day, then uh, we've got to find another uh, group of uh, or another agency. Turn it back to to um, Department of Agriculture so they can take care of uh, eliminating the stray animals and not waiting for somebody to adopt them. It's, it's critical. And uh, we've seen uh, stray animals now attacking our kids, you know, and it's practically every day. Just yesterday, again, I had a report that a kid was uh, bitten in uh, one of our streets. So it's uh, becoming critical and I uh, support uh, revisiting the, uh, the stray animal situation in the game and tell them that, uh, that uh, what you had mentioned earlier is do what they have to do to make uh, the kennels available if they uh, do what they're supposed to do and not keep the animals uh, too long at game. You're right, oh. Mayor, and uh, I do want to, to with, with your comment, I want to say that there is, there was discussion earlier that the Department of Agriculture would receive a certain amount of money 
uh, for this purpose. So uh, I think that's where Mayor Paco and I should uh, be a little more um, aggressive in finding out where that, um, you know, where that process is at at the moment. I don't agree, um, and I'll just throw it out to the council, but I don't agree to use any money that we're receiving, that the mayor's council is receiving for this purpose. And I'm saying I don't agree with it because number one, it's not our primary responsibility. And no. if there's anyone that objects, then you'll please let me know. But I don't believe that any money that we're receiving from the governor at this point should be used to, uh, for stray animals. I think there should be a separate allocation for stray animals, but again, that's that's my my opinion. I'm just throwing it out there, and uh, you know we certainly can have that discussion as we you know as the days go by. I'm not suggesting that we're going to use any funds that we're receiving to address these animals because I believe that Jane uh, has that funding already. They've been appropriated uh, some money, but uh, right. they have to do what they have to do. You know, like you said, there's rules or what we have agreed that was written down already that they had three days to take care of animals at, at the, three days. And if nobody adopted the animals, then they should have uh, euthanized them or whatever they need to do. But uh, that's the policy. And this has been a policy for uh, many, many years. And they're just not going, they're not enforcing it. That's what I'm saying, you know? Right. You're right, Mayor McDonald, and I was, I agree that, uh, no, I wasn't saying that you were, you were um, offering to use money. I was just adding to your comment saying that I agree with you, but I don't agree with any kind of additional uh, spending from any of our allocations from the governor and that a separate allocation should be given. Uh, thank you, Mayor McDonald. Thank you. Uh, the Mayor of Dededo is recognized. Thank you. Um, you know, the stray animal, we can continue to talk, and we'll be talking about stray animals for the next 25 years, and I'm glad I won't be here in 25 years. But um, the thing is, it's this this thing is we we continue to catch trap dogs from our neighborhoods, and like Mayor McDonald said, they don't only uh, threaten the kids, but even the families. I have people that can't even get out of their homes, but the, we we trap the dogs, we keep them, and then we wait for gain to say in the afternoon that, okay, you can bring three up or four up when we have 12 and we're feeding them because, you know, you can't just trap and release, right? We have to, we're at the, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting at the mercy of gain to, to allow us to bring the dogs up there. I remember several, about a year ago, several of our mayors and their staff went up to gain and fix some kennels. Um, you know, but we can't, I mean, they, they still have a limit of number, uh, limit the number of people, uh, dogs that we can come up there, that we can bring up there. Uh, we're always praying every afternoon that they're going to give my vice mayor a call and say, bring four. But it's costing us too, because we're buying dog food, because our seniors are eating their food, they're not leaving it for the dogs. So, you know, dog food is expensive. Um, so, I don't know what else. I, I know there's other options. If I bring them to MTM, he probably has other options for them since he's our Saru person. But, um, uh, you know, we can't give them money either. Uh, we don't have money to give. They get an allotment. Gain gets an allotment from Department of Agriculture annually. And I know it's to pay for their water and the other needs, maybe a vet. But... Uh, we need to find other options. I mean, spay and neutering is something that we've tried. I, I, I don't think we're trying fast enough, though. Um, you know, they stopped the, the, the boonie pups adoption because that's too costly. And there were so many other things that needed to get go through some red tape. I think they're waiting for the act of Congress to allow more of that to happen. But stray animals has been a problem since the 70s. And we're, it's, we're in 2022. We're going to have this in 2032 and 42. We don't find a solution, but we can't release any of our funds that we barely enough to take care of our villages. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate your, your comments.
Um, the mayor Melissa is recognized. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you know what? I, I was uh, absent for a little while while I was the president. And I was I was an honest prior, but I was having four problems with my phone. I uh, I wanted to address that uh, regarding the, the your, you guys are claiming the shortfall of our SMB funding. I don't know if we're still in this appropriate channel, but I, you know, I wrote a letter to you, Mr. President. I wrote a letter to Angel regarding the inequity of, 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 the, of the bumps uh, distribution. I was led to believe that uh, there were the uh, angel said he spoke to Mayor Pido. Then I found out that uh, uh, Senator Barnes was all buying them because of the husband. And I was reaching out to Senator Moyne to see if they can look into uh, amending the, the thing so that it will restore back the, the inequity. You guys, my colleagues, you guys understand that the consolidation with the bumps introduction should have been accompanied with the appropriate and right uh, division language to ensure that no mayor loses or gains because the funding levels and the funding amounts are the same. And the previous uh, pre precedents in the SMB from 2009 and 10, when the funding was at 1,036,000, 2010 reflected 2009 uh, levels. It went down in 2011, then it sprang back up to, to the same level in 2009 and 10, all the way to 18, and the precedents that were it mirrored and reflected the prior year uh, funding uh, received by all the mayors. Now we're, we're deviating from that from that precedent. Man, I, you know, I expected a courtesy. I sent you guys a letter, the, the courtesy letter from you guys on what the, your plan of action is. So I can proceed over as an oversight hearing. This is an oversight. To me, this is a travesty. I mean, you know, everybody's going to lose the 13, are going to lose our six game. There, I emphasized that in the last meetings. If I had gotten a response when you were president, Angel, I would have gone and seek an oversight hearing myself. That letter would prompt me, but I was hoping that this council will resolve it within ourselves to go and seek to correct the wrong. And I, I plan to take this for an oversight. You know, we, 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 we always go in and, and distribute it according to precedence. Then we're deviating. We just discard it, disregard it, and ignore the precedence in the divisions. Only for, for what? For collusion and, and uh, so that we can get more money. Man, you know that we, we, we resolved the SMB distribution last year. Now the PSSCP is subjected to a foreign language that uh, to be divided and made a remainder uh, of the uh, SMB division language. If you look at 2007 all the way to 2021, my colleagues, the, um, and, to, and 2010 all the way to last year, there's a standard uniform and consistent language in the PSSCP that each mayor will receive $15,000. That in itself at least will revert back a major portion of our money. But why should anybody gain even a penny or lose a penny? when the, uh, the objective and the intent of the consolidation of our funding is to provide flexibility. Like I wrote to you, Mr. President and Angel, where's the rationale, where's the logic for 13 mayors to have been the, the, the pursuit and introduction of the bumps, only to lose significant amount of their funding they're trying to be flexible with? Where's the rationale, where's the logic? Man, if you guys have wrote, written a letter in response to my letter to you guys, that would have subjected me and prompted me to go and seek an oversight for myself. I told you, Mr. President, I do not represent this council. Okay? Angel has to go in there at our direction and our request and make that, make that change. I seek that amendment. But if this council is not willing to, okay, I'm going to go in there for an oversight. This is a travesty, guys. Man, we, you know, we... Well, Mayor, I just we, want to let you know that we did this at, um, during the executive director's report. This was not part of the discussion, but because I've allowed you to, to um, offer your opinion, I also want to defend myself to say that before you send the letter, um, I did, uh, during the meetings, ask you to go to, to the legislature directly to request any change in the policy. And that was my communication to you because it was already signed into law. And the only way that that can change is if it went, uh, went back to the legislature. So even if... Even if we brought oh, it up man. here in the council, we couldn't do anything. You'd have to go straight to the legislature. 
And, and I'll repeat it again. We talked about this over and over again, a lot of saying that we, we had public meetings, there was a public hearing about our budget. And I can, all I can say is everybody knew. Everybody knew what was coming down. That's I beg to I differ, Mr. President. I beg okay, to that's differ. Fine. That's fine. But you know what? I, like I said, you know, uh, if, if this thing was uh, was known that uh, it was never discussed, the introduction on the bump. I am not the part of the public. I am part of this council, sir. So anything that's going to hurt me should have been given. I should have been given notifications so I can defend myself and fight for myself. Okay, and just uh, like the other mayors, I'm pretty sure if Mayor Bada is on, on board, he he would understand that. Was he aware of that? And all the other mayors that stood to lose, were, were, uh, if we, if it was introduced to us and we did not say anything, then it's our fault. But if it was already a, a done deal, then we have to go in. You, the Mr. President and the Vice President said, we cannot do anything because it's a law, okay? There's no law that's as in stone or permanent. It can always be amended or repealed. That's why it's but I ask you guys, man, I'm sorry, you guys. And not to us. You know what? I don't know what I'm doing. It is what public. Doing you are here. part of the public. The legislature did oh, not. Come on. Pass you know what? I, yeah, I am a part of the public, but I'm a part of this council that was never consulted in the, in the pursuit and the, of the introduction of the bombs. And you, you guys knew, should have known that the correlating and appropriate language should have accompanied the introduction of the bombs. So that I'm it does not I'm going to have to end the conversation because you know what? I, I'm, I'm I want to make this one. prove that this was you know discussed. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go and pursue my... my, my, yes, my we already, my we already voted, Mr. Please President, we voted, we, Mr. President, we voted for this already as a body. As a body, we voted already. We agreed as a body after the fact, even. We even reaffirmed our decision. Where did you agree, Mr. Vice President? It was in a meeting. We were in a meeting. Where? We did it in this meeting, in a mayor's council meeting. No, no, you know what? Uh, check the minutes. Check the minutes. Yes, we can take what the minutes. minutes? We can provide you the minutes. In the last there. meeting in October, the uh, mayor Gobi made a, a, a motion to discuss it. Okay, I nobody wanted to entertain. And then on the November, and then uh, after the November uh, meeting, I sent you a letter, Mr. President, with Angel. Okay, you guys, at least as a matter of courtesy, respond back to my letter so that will tell me. Are you guys not going to proceed in my request so that I can go there and, and, and request it on my own? That was before you wrote the letter, the Mayor. I here. told you to proceed directly to the legislature because yeah, but before you wrote the letter, Mr. President, Mr. President I when I made my contention, when I made my contention, Mr. President, you had a duty and responsibility to look into my allegations and contentions if it had any merits. And then work with we the merit because we have uh, you know what? The I, I, I proved forget, that it was discussed yeah. publicly. Mayor, we're going to have to end this discussion. We're going to move no, on. No, no, no. Yes, I'm, I'm going to end it. I'm, I'm leaving this thing. You Thank guys, you, I know you guys have something else, bro. We're going to move on to unfinished business. On the foster care project, um, I want to thank all the mayors for participating in the Belen contest. I have to say that we received um, a lot of good comments about our participation. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased with... Uh, the amount of work that went into everyone's Belen. Uh, even after the contest, we were still getting phone calls about whether whether the displays will still be up. And so some of you had to take it down for obvious reasons, but for the most part, everyone else's uh, displays stayed up. So good job to everyone. That was, uh, that was great. And we're hoping to see more uh, camaraderie and more fellowship among the villages again in, in, the, in the very near future, as we will discuss uh, in this meeting. Uh, but I do want to bring up one item of contention. And I say contention because I did ask for, that we had a tie, right? So a tie for second place. And the tie was between Agani Heights and MTM. And because we didn't receive 16 votes by telephone, um, I did not feel it was prudent to make the decision on my own to allow for the 1500 distribution. And so I would like to, to bring that to the council um, so, and I apologize that those of you waiting for that, that prize did not get it. But like I said, it, it's, it is a large sum of money and I didn't feel that it was my decision to make if we didn't receive at least 16 uh, votes for one option. Uh, the, the first option was to divide or to allow each 
winner to receive $1,500. So MTM would receive $1,500 and uh, again, Heights will receive $1,500. Another option was to have, uh, to take the $1,500 and split it in half. So half will be to Agani Heights and half will be to, um, to MTM. And so, like I said, we didn't receive 16 for e either vote. Um, the mayor of Dedra is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. You know, as for our, uh, we have, this, this prize money was coming from our dues. And in our dues, we pay, you know, each of us have payroll deduction that comes out of our checks and goes into our account. I would like to make a motion to give each of those second place um, uh, winners uh, the 1500 each. Because if you split that, it, they're gonna be getting less than what the third place winner got. And everybody did work hard. And I think they're deserving both villages that won. Yeah, that right, on the way, uh, I, I think that they're deserving of the uh, the fifteen hundred each. So that's my motion. Thank you, Mayor. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, the second is seconded by uh, the Mayor of Agassiz okay. Heights. Um, any further discussion on this motion? Right, you know, you work hard and mm -hmm. everybody. Uh... Okay, so the, again, the motion is then to give both villages $1,500, both second place winners $1,500. Uh, any other discussion on this motion? Um, I'm uh, I'm assuming, is, Lolita, is that for you or for the mayor? No, that's me, Mr. President. You have a discussion on this motion? Well, you know what, I on that, I, I said to you, Mr. President, before, uh, my, you, re, you, you requested for recommendation or suggestion. I send you mine. And, you know, just to let you know, I, I, again, I needed your response, but you never did. I that's, put why we're voting on, that's why it's being voted on at this meeting, because I didn't feel like I should make that decision on my own. Um, on the motion, do you have any discussion on this motion? No, whatever you guys decide. I, I, I sent you a, a, a recommendation, the 1500. I, I know. Okay, um, do you I have any discussion on Mayor the current Melissa, I, I agree with Mayor Melissa that it, it, for you to, for us to split the 15, that will be 750 and the thousand to third. I send you my recommendation, Senator. I mean, uh, uh, Mr. President. Okay, so again, the, the motion is by Mayor, the motion was made by the Mayor of Dededo and seconded by the Mayor of Agani Heights. And the motion is to give both second place winners $1,500. Is there any other discussion? Are there any other discussion on this motion? Okay, so I'm gonna call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All who oppose, please say nay. <laughs> Seeing no opposition, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, may I please request the, the treasurer to issue those checks immediately? Treasurer, yes, could sir. you? Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and then now I want to turn the floor over to the vice mayor of, of uh, Manila, who is, is certainly a big part of our committee, the foster care uh, program committee. Uh, we want to, to talk more about how we're going to continue the program, the successes. Uh, vice, vice Kevin, uh, please share with us your uh, communications with public health. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President Hafadeh, and good morning, colleagues, and Happy New Year. Okay, so um, regarding the foster care initiative, our plan was actually to do a specialized or a specific Christmas-specific campaign to try to get at, at least 19 uh, new licensed foster parents or foster families. And as of yesterday, uh, we're pleased to announce that uh, there are now 15 individuals and families that are up for licensing to become foster families and foster parents. So we've been working with Mayfay, the mayor, uh, Mayor Allegan and I have been working with Mayfay to ensure that uh, 
um, we are updated and directly or indirectly to our campaign. We now have 15. Um, we didn't hit our goal, but our intention is to now continue up to the uh, month of May. So even if we uh, surpass the 19, our goal is to, uh, we committed to 19, so we're going to do the best uh, that we can. Um, there was a situation because uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Alec and I had sent um, a packet to the Archdiocese of Aganya as one of our partners. And we were supposed to have a uh, week of Advent Joy campaign to announce it to the different Catholic churches and other faith denominations. And unfortunately, the Archdiocese did write back uh, because they received it and they were supposed to transmit it, uh, forward it to all their parishes. But they uh, wrote back mentioning to us that they overlooked it, so it was never sent out. So uh, our hope is that if everyone's okay with it, that we're going to go and work with our um, advertisement agency, that's Jerry Leon Guerrero. I've already communicated with her last night. And we're just gonna do a very simple um, write-up about the program, and then just a prayer that they they can mention, or they can pray on um, the weekend of Valentine's. So that's gonna be February 12th and 13th. And this is just gonna be in lieu of the December event that uh, had not transpired. So uh, no candles, uh, no uh, additional costs, just basically us connecting with our partner and uh, making it work so that they can contribute back to this campaign. So that's that's the update for everyone. Congratulations, 15 new licensed uh, families and uh, foster parents. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, that's that is great news. Uh, the last that I we heard it was uh, I think it was 11, and then it became 13, and then then the 15. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, for your your hard work and for the campaign. Uh, Mayor, uh, the mayor, Daniel, was recognized. Do we, um, uh, Vice Mayor Kevin, do we know what villages um, that those families that have stepped up come from? So according to Mayfei, um, as, as Mayor Alec had, uh, was concerned about that there was going to be like, they might have been inundated because of the influx of people. They've never received this much at any given time. So she is working because we did request for a breakdown of uh, villages uh, of the new families and the new parents. So we have not received that yet. But as soon as we get it, we will send it out. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Mayor. I know that uh, you had asked that earlier. I, I forgot where it was, but um, I'm just thankful that Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor Kevin is, is on top of that. And so what I'd like to announce again, just to reiterate, is that Mayor, Vice Mayor Kevin is working on, uh, on another uh, program, an activity that we can look forward to that is going to be connected to the Catholic Church side. And the reason why we're only focusing on that at this point, well, maybe not only, but because there's a, there's a larger focus on it is because Harvest Ministries is already working on, on the, the Baptist side and the, and the Protestant side. So uh, we're, we just want to reinforce on the Catholic side because it's, most of us are connected to, that, to those churches and we'll hopefully reach our 19 if we do that and hopefully even more. So thank you again. And uh, Vice, Vice Mayor Kevin, we'll look forward to, to uh, to what is to come for the Foster Care Program. Thank you. Mr. President, one more thing. Um, I know, again, to address uh, Mayor Savarez's uh, thoughts on uh, getting more faith-based faith, uh, faith -based organizations involved. So um, Mayor Savarez, when we do send out that information to the Archdiocese, it'll also go out to our respective um, emails. And if you'd like to just channel it, because now it's just like a script uh, to your respective faith-based organizations, then, then that would be the easiest thing to do. Okay, thank you, because we have 12 denominations of faith in Dedito, so we want to go ahead and share it with them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, moving on to new business, um, we'll, we'll discuss the liberation facilities first. So we, as the, uh, at the officers meeting, we talked about, um, okay, I'm sorry, the mayor of Melissa is recognized. Yeah, uh, you know what, uh, Angel and uh, Mr. President, I, I'm respectfully, respectfully requesting that you give, uh, you respond back to my letter I sent to you in November. That will, I'm, I'm seek, uh, I want to seek uh, uh, the, um, an oversight. I believe this is uh, something that I need to do. I, we have already resolved the distribution last year in the SMB. The IWVV and the PSSAP has always been, has always been divided equally. And as a matter of uh, the omission of the 15,000 language in the PSSAP, it was subjected to a foreign language that has a remaining balance to the, uh, the uh, uh, historical distribution of the SMB. If that 15,000 was restored back 
I'm, I'm willing to lay down and, and that's okay. I'm not, I'll take a loss. But you're going to take 14,000 away from your Matic, 13 from Sinania. Yeah, 12, I will 13. respond to your letter. Um, I'm just yeah, going to Can you please get a letter? So I can tell you probably that I, I tried to do this, resolve this within the council level. So I can have uh, a means to go forward as an oversight hearing. Thank not you. Mayor, um, Angel, you're recognized. Yeah, Mr. President, just so that everything can be uh, proper, can there be a motion by someone to go back to uh, number three on the approval of the agenda to include uh, ARPA and the new business? Okay. I move, Mr. President, I move that we include ARPA and the new business. Second. All in favor, uh, any discussion on this motion? Do one All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries. And, and, we'll, and then when we get to ARPA, that we go into executive session. Right. So we'll, we'll address that after the uh, item number one. Thank you, Angel. Okay, so moving on to new business on liberation. So at the officers meeting, we did discuss um, looking forward to the new year and celebrating 2022 safely and uh, and doing a whole lot more with our people. And we saw that because the, the blend contest was a huge success and, and the participation among the villages was, you know, it was more than we could have asked for. Uh, it's time that we, we take a look at liberation uh, now and that we prepare for it. Uh, so we will have, uh, we'll make this a, a standing committee uh, in which I will chair and uh, the vice president will uh, will be the vice chair of that committee. And we'll have a separate meeting um, outside of this simply because that could be a long uh, conversation. Uh, but we're looking forward to uh, reviving or bringing back uh, the Queen's contest uh, we probably won't have a parade and we probably won't uh, be doing what we traditionally do, but it is important to not only commemorate liberation through the memorials that we, we do so well already in concert with the governor's office and, and uh, organizations, uh, but also the, the Queen, Queen's contest, I think, can be uh, very healthy for us in many ways. And we can certainly talk about uh, options as to how we're going to run that uh, that contest and how we can put on a great uh, display and an and a even better celebration for liberation as we commemorate uh, those times in, in July. And so I am calling for a January 10th meeting at 10 a.m. via Zoom, and I'll send that to, to the mayors and the vice mayors who would like to be a part of that liberation uh, committee meeting. Uh, are, is there any discussion on that or any initial thoughts at this point. I do want to ask though, uh, from on the officer side, we did talk about, um, we did talk about tickets and um, printing. We don't have, um, oh God, okay. <laughs> we don't have, um, you know, we don't have seed money like we typically do. And so I don't know, I mean, are we are we willing to use any kind of are we willing to 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 use money from the our dues to to front it and then uh, reimburse after after the after the Queen's committee uh, simply because again we don't have we don't have uh, we don't have seed money for for tickets. I'm only bringing this up now because if we have the when we have the committee meeting. Um, if the Queen's committee decides that they want to do tickets, it would behoove that committee to print the tickets immediately uh, so that it can be dispersed to the villages so that they can they can uh, start selling their tickets. Uh, any thoughts on that? I have um, um Okay, Mayor um, Dedido. You know, it would, I mean, like I said, I look at our treasurer's report often and I see that we do have money. Uh, and that's, like I said, it's not government allotment. Is there any way that we can front the 
Queen's Committee, at least for the, the printing of the tickets. And when they raise, you know, when they start collecting on their raffle, because there is a uh, $1,500 uh, um, fee that uh, after their, they, when they start raising their money, uh, before you give them their um, commission that stays back for operational, you know, logistics and whatever is needed for uh, operations of the Queen's um, contest. Per that, that is correct, Mayor. And so that's, yeah. that is correct, Mayor. And, and that's kind of why I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it up to see if there's interest in, in uh, proposing a motion to do, do that. So I will motion to affront the Queen's Committee for the printing of the tickets, fifth, up to no more than $1,500. Second. Second. Oh, $1,500? One, one, five, zero, zero. Mm. Is that good? Tina, we're going to get $3,000 then. No, Tina. No, just to print the tickets, Mayor. It's, no, I, it's think, not I think tickets was like $5,000, $5,000, Was oh. it? Okay. Okay. So I, okay. I, I changed my motion. I withdraw that first and second motion and increase it to $6,000 to front. We do have money in our dues. Okay. And that's why I said, I'm looking at what our dues uh, account is and, uh, we have money in our in our dues that are collected, so up to six thousand dollars, no more than that, and then we will be reimbursed once the uh, committee starts making their money. Second. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It is second. So the motion was made by the mayor of Dededo to front the the liberation uh, committee six no more than six thousand dollars and uh, to be reimbursed to the dues account after monies have been raised. And it was seconded by the mayor of Mingilao. Any further discussion on this motion? I think Mingilao and Dedido have queen candidates. <laughs> that was a joke. As long as I'm the mayor of the 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 it was a joke as well. I'm the only queen of the village. That's right. Uh, the mayor of Hagen is recognized. Oh, you know, you know, man. Uh, I, I agree with the with the group and, and the fronting of the, the money, I just would like to see that that would be the first item that would be paid back, um, even before any dispersals are made. Um, for of course. Yeah. I'm, I'm and just the, saying, just- Pay it back to, during the first counting. Thank you. Duly noted. I second that, Mayor Kevin. I second that. <laughs> then we'll just increase our dues. Mayor Allen, do you have any further discussion, Mayor Allen? Well, I was just going to say that, you know, Mayor, since you brought up the liberation, which is very important, right? And in, in any way of shape or form to, to bring back some form of uh, <coughs> celebrating safely, that's the reason why we have this discussion. And I'm really, uh, really looking forward to making sure that at least we, we take part in this because we're, you, we're, you say we're going to spearhead this as a council, as a body. So thank you. Thank you too, certainly. And, and let me just note that um, because, you know, by statute, we're, we're the mayor's council uh, supposed to lead these, these celebrations. Certainly we are not gonna, we are not gonna proceed without, the, uh, without working with the governor's office. Uh, they, the governor's office, I'm sure has a plan and we'll, we want to work with them to, uh, to make sure that whatever we do, it's, you know, it's really one celebration. Any further discussion on this motion? Seeing no discussion, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All the opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Angel, did you have your hand? Yes, Mr. President, I just wanted to make sure that before we print the tickets that uh, of course there has to be a, a committee put together to decide what the prices are going to be and also the rules and regulations of uh, of the contest uh, because from the very beginning we need to make everybody understand the ages of who's eligible uh, whatever and and the prices so I, I think it behooves us to get a, a chair and a vice chair or a committee together to get that thing working. Mayor correct. Parker wants to be on the 
Group Committee for Queens. That is correct. Well, we'll have that discussion when we have the, the liberation committee meeting. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to um, to the ARPA on new business. Um, we're going to, we will recess to go into executive session. Mr. President, before we do ARPA, can we discuss the impending uh, Jan 10? Jan 10. January 10th, Manamco. Have we heard anything on, I mean, our, so, we're, so far, I, part, yes. Part of the agenda that's not, I mean, I don't have, I don't have a problem, but how are we with, you know, following this agenda? I understand, Mr. President. I know we met Monday in emergency side. I'm just worried about we have two days left and we're still awaiting word from public health. Um, and I think we, there's a lot of discussion out there, chatter. And I think on our end, it's and we want to, at least for us publicly, it's not any of our mayor's decisions. And I think I just want to make that known to the public that it's not what we're, we're, we're still so far on schedule for January 10, but should anything happen or change, it's not from the mayor's council. And I want to know that uh, we're waiting for advisor from public health or and from Adeloup on that end, because two so days the only thing, be... uh, um, Ms. Vice President, the only thing that I don't have a problem, I actually wanted to discuss it. I, I, I apologize that I did not include it in the agenda. Just a little, a lot on my mind at these days, but Angel, how, I mean, what are the ramifications with a, if we discuss this at this point? Again, Mr. Brown, we just go back to the to the approval of the agenda and include it. Okay, Mayor Hoffman, if you want to make that motion. Sure, I make the motion to include the senior center's reopening onto the agenda. So we can just have, just as quick, like we're not moving money, we're not making policy. So just to have this discussion. And I second it. <laughs> Any, any other discussion on that motion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, aye. Mr. President. Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. I, I, yeah, I, just, on. I just want to be clear, uh, all, all who oppose, Okay, just so that you know, the motion is carried to discuss the um, the senior center openings, and it was was um, moved by Mayor Hoffman and sec Mayor of Sinahanya and seconded by the Mayor of Tumani. Uh, Thank you. I, so I, I just on that point is like we're literally two days from coming onto a weekend, and I so think just to cut it short, honestly, I have not heard yeah. from them. Um, I did speak to the administrator of the Division of Senior Citizens uh, late yesterday, I believe, and the there is the concern, like we all know, about the uh, variant, Omicron variant, and the rise of positive cases, and so I believe that it just seems as if we are going to postpone the, the opening, um, for the the good of our Manamco. Uh, my request yesterday and has been my request is that we know now, that we know soon, um, that we know yesterday so that we can inform our Manamco. Uh, I also did at, the, at our emergency meeting um, say that the, the notice has to come out from public health that it, because public health recommends this uh, in, in communication with the governor and the physician's advisory group, advisory group that we'll, um, you know, that these are our actions, right? Uh, and it doesn't, it's not the fault of the mayors, or the, the, the mayors were not prepared, uh, but at the same time, we still haven't received anything. So I can't, there's no, there's no word. And, and I, 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 I'm sorry, Mr. President, but yes, and, and, that, and that's kind of why, because the fact is, I mean, we are prepared to still do what we need to do for our people and for Manumco, but we're, it's in, it involves transportation and resources, the vendor who prepares the food, the numbers we need to give from our rec leaders. And so I think, I mean, if there was the urgency to talk on Monday and we're on Wednesday, where's that same urgency on that end? And I'm just, I'm trying to figure out what else they need to do on that end. And because, you know, we, we told our people that the meals will, would stop January 10 because the feds wanted congregate meals. And now that we're gonna, and we saw the governor's address last night and we just got from Dr. Berg a few minutes ago. So there is that 
concern. So if there's the concern there, can that move forward to the seniors parts of it? Because some centers, uh, I mean, some mayor's offices, uh, you know, I think all of us do, do deliveries. And so I, I, I don't know, maybe this is the form to do it at. And hopefully maybe Mayor Bob uh, Lazama at the governor's office, if you can find out where this can, where we just need a decision from public health, either go or no, and that's it. And then get the letter to support that. Cause I want to give our seniors a written letter tomorrow or Friday saying, we are going to continue or no, it's not despite ABC. So thank you. Thank you for the form, Mr. President. The, uh, the mayor of Chalapag Ward is working. We can't hear you, Mayor Gogwe. So I still can't hear you, Mayor Gogui. Um, I'm not sure. We, it shows you're, you're unmuted, but I don't know how. <laughs> Maybe your microphone connection. And Mayor Alec, you're on mute also. We have our struggles on this end too. <laughs> um, Mayor Gogui, you may want to you may want to restart and then join us, and we'll we'll take you back for sure. We're not making any. We're not taking any action. Oh. Uh, at this point, uh, but Mayor, maybe at this time, um, a former Mayor Bob, Bob Lizama, could would you be able to um, to get back to us as soon as you can on that decision, please? Yes, I'm on it. I know I'm trying to get some major phone calls. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, any anyone else want to have a discussion on this uh, topic? Um, Angel, you're recognized. Yeah, Mr. President and Vice President, I just, because of my concern also that we're having a, a meeting today again with the uh, senior center uh, staff and ADC at three o'clock, I, I did call Art Snogs in last night and I asked him, well, when are we going to get a decision one way or the other? He said he's probably already made his decision. He's just waiting for the governor to either uh, confirm it or, or not confirm it. But he said before, before the three o'clock meeting, we should know. And I said, you know, there's been a rise of uh, 210 cases just last night. And so we need well, to know need to be what way yeah, we're headed. That's always been the issue is that we have to prepare. And so the thing is, honestly, I, I felt on Monday, I knew the answer. I think we all knew the answer on Monday based on the discussion we had. And it was, yeah. it's, I know it's not a simple decision, but it's it's logistical. It's a logistical nightmare for most of us. For those of you that have to actually call, I mean, we don't have that many people in PD to call for senior meals. But those of you, I can't imagine what Dedodo and Jigo have to do, Manila and Berigada. So I, I don't want to be upset about it. But we've had the discussion since Monday, and I mean, so we'll wait. We'll wait to hear. And Angel, if you're here before us, please let us know. And Mayor Bob, uh, former Mayor Bob, if you're here before us, please let us know. Uh, the mayor of uh, Puerto Chalampago is recognized. Can you hear me now? You can hear me now. Okay, I apologize. Um, so I, as I was saying, uh, or trying to say initially, is that without a senior center in my village, half of my residents go to um, Sanhania, the other half go to Mingilo. And it was, you know, I guess, there were some concerns from some of my residents that Sinahania would open when we get the all clear, but because uh, 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 Mingilo is being used for this monoclonal um, uh, antibody uh, uh, issuance for those who are COVID positive, that they were going to remain closed uh, even when the other senior centers uh, would open. Is that a correct statement from that I'm getting from my residents? Does anybody know? 
Uh, Mayor Hoffman, can you answer that uh, question? Sure. I, um, we actually, that was something we did address because uh, in, in our regular discussions, uh, let me turn on my camera. There were three centers that were um, still awaiting to be uh, inspected and um, reopened. And Manila one is, what do we do with the monoclonal? So that was a concern. Do we either relocate them or do we relocate the monoclonal? And so that was the discussion on Wednesday last week. And that's, I think, also playing into the, the, the decisions that will probably be made today is that there has to be a delay because we cannot do that. We cannot just open up nine of the 15 or 12 of the 15 that need to be there because we still have the ADCs that also need to open too. So you have three ADCs and 12 senior centers. And, you know, uh, it, that was kind of what part of the discussion that we were impressing upon division of senior citizens is what do we do in this case? If, for example, GIGO is not ready and or still under construction or in Alahan is still under some kind of construction, where do we send them and what do we do? And the same with Mangila, it's it's ready to go, but it's being used for another purpose. So uh, it, we're on the forefront of that. That's part of the reason why we're, we want to see what the decisions will be. Well, the reason why the question came about is because ultimately, if they can't go and get their congregate meals, are we going to be still delivering food to those that attend the centers that are still closed? That was the uh, ultimate question. Mayor, uh, Mayor uh, Gogui, yes, that is part of our, that has always been a part of our communication with public health. And so we're hoping to get that uh, final decision today and we'll hopefully have a, a better answer for everybody. Because yes, we were all, we never wanted to let any senior uh, go unfed. That was never, that's not, that's of course, that's not our intention. And our goal is to make sure that we accommodate everyone. And I appreciate that. And so, I, I, you know, here's my admission. My mission is I know that uh, you guys have been having uh, Zoom meetings with regard to the senior centers. And for me personally, since I don't have one, I, I've never added that onto my calendar, uh, my schedule to uh, chime in on these meetings. So accordingly, you know, I, I'm not up to date of what's being discussed. So I asked uh, the, the, the committee or the group that's meeting for these se senior centers if they're are decisions that are being made or actions that are being taken or uh, updates that uh, we are provided with from Division of Senior Centers, if they could be shared with the group, I would greatly appreciate that. Yes, certainly. Um, and we, we, we have always uh, included in our discussion those mayors that don't have center, because I don't have a center as well, but uh, we're all part of uh, you know, we're all part of that discussion. So thank you, Mayor. The Mayor of Dededo is recognized. Okay, thank you. So yesterday I did get a phone call from Charlene over a division asking me if I realized that I cannot um, have the maximum capacity based on um, environmental health. And so my capacity to include my staff would only at Derido Center would only be 75. That meant if I have five, I have my two rec leaders and my CSEP workers and volunteers, I can't have more than 70 seniors and then the five staff. So I would have to come up with a cohort schedule. So if I have a cohort, uh, then I would also need to remember that I need to feed the seniors that are still at home that cannot come because it's not their cohort day. Um, so that would have to divide my staff or the vice mayor and I would have to go and make those deliveries so that the staff can stay at the center and take care of the seniors that are there. So that is my concern. If, if we can't have, you know, we all looked about the, looked at the capacity that each of us can handle and are we going to allow the three feet uh, distance between the seniors when they return on a six foot table. And, um, but then now that they're telling me that environmental health is saying, no, we can only have no more than 75 at our facility with the, the square footage that we have. Uh, so I would have to, that's including staff. And then so we would have to come up with our option B, which would, 
be, you know, how would we, we continue to feed the ones that are not there? Because our seniors rely on these meals. So I am concerned and I do have questions at this afternoon's meeting. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the Mayor Mingila was recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. My concern, um, I just had a question. In, in, in the initial state of everything and, and being aware that I currently am uh, uh, using my facility to help the, the residents and the community with the monoclonal treatment facility, has there been a, a, a plan, just like we're all discussing right now, has there been a plan, even with what uh, the, the, our mayors just previously had mentioned, regarding the capacity as well, and was there a plan already instated for my seniors? And I'm talking about ready in, in, in a format where my seniors were gonna go, because we, we've done all the requirements of getting the numbers on returning uh, clients that do wanna come back, as well as the ones that, that are getting the, the food and all that. So was there one already initiated to the, the SEO or the division regarding where my seniors were, were practically gonna go? Mayor, I'm going to defer to Mayor Hoffman because I know I was not at the last meeting and I know that was discussed. Uh, I do have some, uh, I have insight, but I don't have the real answer, but I'll defer to Mayor Hoffman on that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Um, for, I guess for Mayor Savars' call too. So originally, if we were going to reopen on January 10th, we were working with Adeloupe to have a standalone executive order, which addressed specifically the senior citizens' capacities and the activities because it falls into three things, a care facility, a bingo hall, and an eating establishment. And the whole verbiage of the original guidances, which means covered, uncovered, establishment stuff, it really didn't kind of apply to certain things. So it needed its own standalone, which talked about safe distancing and the capacities of the building. So that was supposed to be addressed. That was prior to even hearing about anything on Sunday or Monday. And so that was kind of the track of what was going. For Mengilau itself, the, the plan, what was, is to looking for alternative sites to relocate the monoclonal clinic. Um, they're very appreciative of what's going on there, but you know, we, I was suggesting the skilled nursing facility or somewhere else that could be used, a section of UOG, one of the classrooms there uh, in the, the, the field house. So we proffered the idea. It's not my decision. It's not, not of ours. So we kind of gave the ideas that we really want Mangila to reopen and have enough time to reorganize, sanitize, and prepare. And so that's kind of was coming close to the window. And where you were probably going to be sent for some is good, was going to be Sinahania, Ganya Heights, and then up to uh, uh, Jotnia Tau. That was going to be the division. And it would have to involve uh, using the transportation coordinators as well. So there was a lot of moving parts. And I, I just got a text from John Jr. side so say it's the, the announcement's gonna come out shortly, but I don't know if it's a thumbs, thumbs up or thumbs down, but that's kind of, there's a lot of moving parts if we're going to have to relocate a center, like we had, if we would have to do Jigo in Alahan and Mengilau until they're ready in their set, in, in uh, maintenance side of it and the contractor side of it. But uh, so far we're, you know, yeah, I, it, to me, it looks like we're not gonna open on January 10th, but okay. yeah. Okay. Well, well, Mayor, I don't know if this is premature to mention, and uh, this was just my concern. I don't know where the guidelines are now with public health in terms of our Manonku. But uh, in the past, the Manonkus were were at our at the Mingilau uh, office, and they were open air in the back. Uh, I don't know if you remember back then, uh, a while back. So the senior activity prior to that that building being constructed 15 years ago, the <clears throat> the Manonkus were outside in the open area in the pavilion. So I was just, that's the reason why I was inquiring. So if there's, an, if there's no avenue in, in, in place, they may, may want to look at the area here. And if that's something we can do and they can inspect and see if it's feasible, then let's try doing that if we're all still focusing on the time frame and if there's no absolute designation of an area. That, that, that's a great suggestion. We can, I can bring that, we can bring that up today in the three o'clock meeting uh, about alternate sites within your village itself. Some of the, you know, some of the ideas also for the senior, if we couldn't figure out uh, some of the openings was to do grab and go at specific sites. And so there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of people talking uh, that need to kind of be in, in the discussions where they need to be. Uh, we're just waiting for the answers because none of those answers come from us. 
okay. we can't make those decisions on it. So, Understand. Uh, and I think that's, you know, we've, we've asked DSC for guidance. We've asked the Division of Environmental Health for guidance. And so I can ask um, Shar and Monica to inspect the site that you're talking about to see if that would be feasible for your seniors or even like the church, the social hall area would be another alternative site or, you know, in your uh, marketplace, because it depends on the type of activity. That's what DEA correct. is going to do. Yes, What's the type correct. Of activity? Okay. correct. Okay, thank ADA you. ADA restrooms, yes, understood. Yes, of course, thank you. Thank you, Vice President. Thank you. Thank you, anyone else have any discussion on this, uh, the January 10 opening? Okay, well, well, we'll obviously, we'll hopefully hear, here before the three o'clock meeting today. Thank you. And moving on now to our, our last item on the agenda on new business, the, the ARPA money. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll have to call for a, a motion to move into executive session. Is there a motion to move into executive session? A motion to um, uh, move into executive session to discuss the uh, ARPA distribution. Second. Okay, uh, the motion is made by the mayor of Dededo and seconded by the mayor of uh, Barabada. Uh, for any guests and anyone else, we're going to recess. Uh, we're going to, mayors and vice mayors, you'll need to make sure that your your name is is proper on your, um, on your uh, profile name and we'll move you into a breakout room. Okay, so please hang tight. Sorry, not to matter for me. What's lunch? Nanya, yeah. it's 12 to 20. <laughs> you want to try this virtual Caligwin? <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the banellas. I'm waiting for the banellas from the morning. How dare you, Luis? How dare you, Luis? <laughs> There's vanillas here already, and then someone else is coming with another batch. So come on up. <laughs> Thank Elaine, you can go ahead and just um, respond to the to the um, invite to the breakout room, and then you can go in. Yeah. Mayor Bada, just respond to the invite. Mayor McDonald's, please respond to the invite and uh, to go into the breakout room for the executive session. Anybody calling my name? Yes, Mayor Bada, this is Tia from the PD Mayor's Office. Just respond to the invite for the breakout room for the executive session. I sent it to, um, I sh you should have got an invite. Okay. Uh, okay. We're there lunch right now. I'll wait for her to come back. Okay, no problem. Thank you, girl. No problem. You too, sir. Mayor McDonald. Just go ahead and respond to the invite for the executive session.
Hi, Mayor. This is Tia. Are you able to locate the the joint or look at the um on your the bottom of your screen? There should be a breakout room option. There. Oh. Uh, What's the block yeah. page? So uh, I'm waiting. So I'm just. Um,
Afidi Mayor, I believe I already sent you the invite. So just go ahead and accept and uh, you can go ahead and go in. Yes, I did. <laughs> For the iPhone that just entered, is that Mayor Paco or Mayor Kingo? Mayor Paco. Hi, Mayor Paco. I'm going to go ahead and uh, send you into the breakout room, okay? Okay. Mayor Bada, you ready? Just call Mayor Paco, just accept the invite. <laughs> There you go.
Hello? Hello? Hi, Mayor. Okay, I'm on, am I on? Okay, you are on the main room. So, um, Miss Angie? Yes? Um, are you able to look and see if he has a breakout room option on the bottom? All right, they're all in. Okay, everybody, we're just gonna wait.
everybody went to the buffet. Kevin, how was your lunch? <laughs> Banelas Monglo. <laughs> that was good, good uh, Banelas Monglo. <laughs> and shrimp Kelleguin. Okay, the, um, this regular meeting is back into session, um, reconvened. On the, on the subject of the American Rescue Plan money, the 8.3 uh, million that is going to be given to the Mayor's Council of Guam, I, would, um, I am requesting for a motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor Hoffman, did you have a question? I make the motion to table the American Rescue Plan uh, till uh, uh, Friday. If we can not, uh, if we can adjourn for the day, it's been a long day for everyone. We have a three o'clock, so if we can table that till Friday, and we we take that only point of discussion on Friday. The entire American Rescue Plan. Um, hold on, because the. Muted. the the, bu the, the budget side of it uh, that was going to help cover our shortfalls. We can have that discussion on, on, on a later time. Um, so is there a motion then to, to approve our plan? I move to approve the plan. Okay, so the, the, the gear motion is then to approve the, the plan regarding the senior center maintenance, the heavy equipment operator. Insurance payments, the FEMA matching funds, the heavy equipment, the four by four truck. Yes, Mr. President, I make the motion. Is there I a second? second? I second. The second, the motion was made by Mayor Alex uh, and uh, seconded by the Vice Mayor of Manila. Please place your your phone to on mute or your speaker. Are there any, is there any discussion on this motion? Okay. Um, I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All the opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. On announcements, um, there's two. There are two announcements. The first announcement is that the the G3 Conserva Conservation Corps second cohort will begin their village cleanup again starting February. I have uh, recommended for them to follow the same schedule as they did the last time. So they'll start in Jigo and work their way down. Their their um, their staff will contact you and you can work with them. If you need to make a change on the date, that's not a problem. Just work with them on the date change. I just want to make sure everyone knows that that that's a new cohort that will begin. And then the the last thing on announcements that I have is that um, we do have we're preparing our conference room to get oh the mayor of Dedados recognized. Okay, uh, you know what I uh, met with uh, uh, the new director for the uh, the public library, and oh, he sorry. he's wanting to uh, open. Uh, more days in the public library sites in the various villages. So he'll be going around uh, to make appointments to meet with uh, uh, the various mayors that have libraries within their vicinities. I know that he mentioned Hoggett and Malesu, uh, I believe Jotnia, Baragata, he's already uh, working on, on doing, doing more than just one day in Baragata. And uh, of course, uh, we're working on something here in Dedido, but he did mention that uh, he's working with the staff to open it up more and also to incorporate um, activities or 
programs with the library and the community. So I talked to him about um, how GCC is coming out to, we're registering uh, residents who are in need or interest of uh, obtaining their high school, adult high school diplomas. And so he said that would be a good program that he can incorporate for classes. So opening up the library for those type of person purposes, but also to encourage more people to use um, the system. It's not just for checking out books, but they also have eBooks. They have the internet services for people to come and use the internet to apply for jobs, do their research and helping the families that um, do not have internet access or even computer access at homes. So uh, that's something that he he's actually working on. Uh, another thing is that um, several weeks ago, Frank Tyron from, uh, I believe, Salvation Army had requested for, they're, they're going to be doing the point in time count, point in time count on the 27th and 28th. So if you've you saw your list for your villages where they go into and there's additional areas that uh, they can, that we need to have them address. Uh, please send that information to Frank Tyron over at the Salvation Army. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. Um, just to, to finish my, my first, my second point was we're preparing our conference room to return. We hope to return this month, but we could not. Um, so we're going to return hopefully by February. I, I do need a motion to, uh, there's some a little expense that we need to pay for uh, from our revolving funds. And that is the, the uh, to prepare the backdrop or the drapery at the conference room. And so the total amount is $650. $200 was already paid and a balance of 450 is due. Is there a motion to, to pay for that? Thank you. There is a motion made by the mayor of Sanahani. Is there a second? Motion to approve. Seconded by the, by the mayor of MTM. Um, yes. Okay, thank you. Any, any further discussion on that motion? No discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 So when we leave office, we take aye. the vote for this, right? Aye. 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 2026, we take the drapes. Uh, all opposed. Thank you. Um, the motion carries. Thank you so much. Any other announcements? Okay. It is, I don't even, my, my um, phone died. Oh, <laughs> are we going to, are we, so are we going to have the discussion on Thursday? I mean, on Friday or did we table it? I don't remember. Do we vote on that or is it tabled or? Thank you, man. So we can't we can't adjourn. So we're yeah. going to. Well, no, because we are going to. Um, Angel, what is the suggestion on that? We recess. If it's for that section of the uh, distribution, uh, since we did not uh, it's not voted on it today, just uh, recess the today's meeting until what time on Friday. When you get to take the vote. That's fine. Um, we will. Mr. President, recess. if I may, I, I I move to recess today's meeting, but versus adjourn until ten o'clock Friday. That's the uh, sixth, fifth, sixth, seventh Friday, the seventh. Uh, recess fine, until ten o'clock so that we can um, uh, continue our discussions with regard to the uh, uh, additional <laughs> funding for to supplement our current operating budget. Second. 30 minutes only, right? 30 minutes. Can we do earlier, like 8 or 9 o'clock? <laughs> okay, there's, there is a motion, and the motion was made by the, the mayor of Orde Chalampago and seconded by the mayor of Sinahanya. The discussion on the motion is, can we uh, move to another er, an earlier time? That's one. Mine is, can we move it to 9 a.m. instead? Any other discussion on this motion? I meant to 9 a.m., 9 a.m. Is are there any other any further discussion on this motion? 9 a.m. Friday. We're going to recess until 9 a.m. on Friday. Any other discussion? 9 a.m. to 9:30. 9 9 <laughs> read, read your paperwork. How soon, to Angel? Can we get the visual chart so we're not seeing it on Friday? Or the sooner okay, the better. Can we just finish the motion first, please? Um, but that's gonna that's gonna decide the Friday if 
if it's not ready by Friday, what are we going to discuss for 30 minutes? Yeah. So, It'll be done. It'll be done. Okay. okay. I, I want to get it to you early enough, Mayor Gogui. That, well, if I have to do it myself and send it out, I'll do it myself. Okay. <laughs> Do it, so. we it will be done. Mayor Gogu's getting me a drink. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I, I I got a bottle of Shivas ready for you. <laughs> Can we do it today? And the numbers will be all skewed. So this is like the invasive, invasive plant. Yes. You know. Can we drink today? Hey, hold on, we are, um, we're, we're, we're still we're still in a meeting. Where's our sergeant know. at arms? We're still in a meeting. I would say we're all recessing until. <laughs> Friday, this Friday at 9 p.m. I. 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 I.